Amazing. Welcome, everybody, as you're all coming in. So I'll let you all get settled in. Thank you so much for being here with us on this Tuesday evening. Awesome. I okay. can see quite a few of you are still just attaching to your audio as well. So we'll just give you a couple of seconds to, uh, to get settled. Brilliant. It looks like we're just waiting for a couple more people. So again, we'll give you just a couple of minutes. Please do let us know in the chat box if you've got any questions, any topics you specifically want to see us cover as well. Don't forget that there's no such thing as a silly question. If you're wondering it, then somebody else is probably wondering the exact same thing as well. If you prefer and you're more comfortable, you can absolutely drop a direct message to myself or to Liv or to Matt or to Ruth. If you just make sure that you select our name in the chat, then you should be able to get directly in touch with us. Um, we will read the question out, but it will be anonymous. So people will not know that you've sent that as well. So please do take advantage of that. Um, we will be getting the recording out as well, and we will have captions on the recording too. So if anyone is struggling with audio on here, we will make sure that's there for you. And on the next call, we will have our closed captions properly enabled. We're just having some technical issues this evening as to why they're not on, but they will be on for the next two as well. So please do know that. So I can see that everybody has pretty much started to come in and get settled down. So I think we can pretty much look at getting started. So I just wanted to say a big thank you, first of all, for being here and giving up your time this evening. I know quite often if it's been a hectic day, then the last thing that sometimes we want to do is sit on Zoom. But we know that this is a, a really important topic. And thank you. Just thank you for being here. We're going to give you this evening a very general educational overview of finances regarding financial well-being for spoon holders, for spoonies, for um, anyone that's got chronic illness or has been affected previously with regard to finances as well. Now, we know that everyone on this call is going to have a variety of circumstances, experiences, backgrounds, and that's why we want to give as much of an overview as we can do. But we do remember that you're all individuals as well. So Ruth, who is a fantastic financial advisor that's on this evening, has very kindly offered to um, set up some calls as well if people do want to talk through their own individual circumstance. Because, yes, we can give an overview, but we know the intricacies for everyone on an individual level um, sometimes do vary. I know certainly um, having a couple of chronic illnesses myself, I know that... Um, they do affect me with finances in various different ways and that experience is going to be different for each and every one of us too. So we're holding this as a three-part series. We're so passionate at Vet You about this being a really, really important topic because we see it posted about in the forums time and time again, questions, frustrations around um, getting financial advice, around finding policies, around actually breaking it down and making these topics doable. So we've given you three parts First of all, tonight, where Ruth will go through what we're going to be covering this evening. Then we're going to have a session next week where there's the opportunity for questions, the opportunity for us to hold a space for you to actually take some action around finances. And then the third session where we move on from the next steps of that too. But like we say, Ruth is going to go into that in more detail as well. If you are catching up on the recording, because we are really keen for this to be a resource, like we've just said, we keep seeing these questions asked again and again and they're so important because we see so many people that find doors being slammed in the face opportunities feeling like they're closed and actually there are people that are willing to root for you out there and there are options there are support um, and Ruth is one of them as she's pointing uh, wildly at herself as well and um, I know certainly a lot of us on this call have had the pleasure of uh, having Ruth assist us with their finances as well we did want to say a huge thank you, especially to BVCIS, the British Veterinary Chronic Illness Support, for partnering with us on this, because we know that you have a community of people who are especially affected by these circumstances and by these topics. And we're really, really thrilled to be joined by Liv Anderson Nathan from BVCIS, who I'm going to hand over to now to tell you a little bit more about this fantastic organisation before I dive into vet you side of things. Liv, over to you. Lovely, thanks so much, Katie. Um, so yeah, as Katie said, um, we are uh, the British Veterinary Chronic Illness Support Charity. We're a relatively new charity in the veterinary industry, and we exist to uh, 
um, support veterinary staff who are living and working with all kinds of chronic illness. So that can be physical chronic illness, that can be mental chronic illness, that can be neurodivergent uh, as well. Um, so if you kind of um, have the issues that, that um, are relevant to the, the webinar today, you probably fall under our umbrella. Um, or if you know somebody who does, then, then definitely turn them on to us. We grew out of the um, veterinary spoon holders community. Um, and that's where the title of the webinar comes from, the Spoonies term, which some of you might not be familiar with. But it's just a, an intra-community term, so something we use in, in, um, between ourselves for some, uh, someone with a chronic illness. Um, and basically, it comes from this spoon theory by a, a, a chronic illness and disability advocate, Christine Misandarino, who's outside the veterinary industry. Um, but she used this theory to describe to one of her friends how it was living with lupus and how you have a really limited amount of energy every day um, to try and uh, to kind of balance out you've got 11 spoons for the day but you you know everything that you do takes one and, and how do you choose what you use your energy for so that's where the the term spoonie comes from um, but you don't have to be a spoonie to um, benefit from this this webinar or the series of webinars um, but if you if you do uh, identify with that idea or that term at all you're more than welcome to join our Facebook community uh, there's already I think 1,900 of us um, out there and um, so you're not alone you're not the only person having these issues and like Katie said again and again it comes up that people come to our community and they ask you know we've I've been declined uh, health insurance income protection life life cover um, what can I do and, and we wanted to help answer those questions so British Veteran Chronic Illness Support has three mission threefold mission to advocate for, support and educate about um, chronic illness in the veterinary industry. And so hopefully this can form part of that mission. Thank you so much, Liv. And certainly uh, I always find the, the spoon analogy a very powerful one that just explains so well those, those energy levels and managing that as well. And again, we're really grateful for your support on there. I know Liv will pop into the chat as well, the link to that Facebook group, if anyone's not a part of that already. I know many of you will be because we've been advertising this event a lot in there as well. So just before I do hand over to Ruth, I was briefly going to tell you about us as Bet You. We are a group of four vets. We are most definitely not financial advisors. We're not accountants. We're not um, tax advisors. We are just passionate professionals that really know the importance of these topics. Um, we formed a community where we do help break down the barriers to them. We help educate you and we help you to look after your health, your income and your future by protecting it with these policies and making that as accessible as we can do. So you can see here we've got Matt Dobbs in the top left who is on this call with us this evening. We've got Paul Horwood in the top right, Ebony Escalona and myself Katie Ford as well. So we came together because we've all got a variety of experiences in this profession from being employees, employers, locums, business owners, um, we've been influencers, community owners, um, we've worked in farm animal, small animal, um, equine, we have done the whole circle I think in the profession and at the same time we've all had our own individual journeys with money. Some of us ended up with very good sound financial advice right at the beginning that led to some good decisions and others of us, probably me included, found these lessons the harder way further down the line as well. And we've all come to the point of being so passionate about these topics, helping provide education and helping to connect you with people that we've spent time building relationships with that we know understand the profession and that are willing to gift their time to come and help educate you just like Ruth that we've got on this evening as well. So you can see here, oh, yeah, Sorry, Matt. And all go, I was going to say is, absolutely, Katie, and, and as, as one of the original founders, the, the, the clue to this organisation is on the tin, the name's on the tin, it's all about you, and at this time when our profession often wants to put people into buckets, into silos, we really understood that that isn't about the individual and that isn't giving you the best opportunity for your future, so that you was founded to be able to bring independent and individual advice to you about your financial future and and that's why we work with a series of independent financial advisors to be able to provide you with the best advice that's right for you um you know as katie said a number of us have, have been um lucky enough to have had some of that information early on in our careers and it certainly supported and helped us grow both professionally and personally and uh the whole point of that you is to be able to put you at that center of that journey. Thank yeah, you, Katie. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, Matt. And I always love hearing Matt talk on this topic because when him and Paul came together and started Bet You, it was just so much sat in that kind piece of knowing how important this is and how much you all work for the money that you earn and how actually you can be in control and be back as the, the centre of being independent you, as it were. So you know you've got backup plans in place. So like we said here, there's loads of topics that we've got educational pieces on that we partner with people on. And again, like Matt said there, like you work hard. You have spent years at university doing your training, doing your qualifications. And actually, we want to just make it as accessible as possible for you to know about these topics. So you can put yourself back in the driving seat of protecting, like we say, your health, your income and your future as well. And just to add, who, who are we not? Like we said, we personally as the four founders of Vet you are not financial advisors, we're not accountants, but we do know fantastic professionals that we've built relationships with that understand this profession, that give you access to all sorts of suites of products, advice, education, webinars, signposting. So you can see a few of them that we've got here. We're joined by Ruth this evening that we're going to come on to very shortly as well. Like we said, we've uh, curated a fantastic array of guest speakers, experts, partners, and you don't need to wait until we've got specific events on these topics. If you want us to help you signpost you in any particular direction as well. So you can see all the events that we've got coming up. We'll pop these links in the chat box for you as well. We always make sure these are free to attend. They're all recorded. You can catch up on them. There's always options for Q&A. Please do call us out if there's jargon. We have started a, a mission where if any of our advisors throw in some jargon terms that actually haven't been explained, pop it in the chat box, get it in there because we then give five pounds to charity. So we always want to make these really accessible and really understandable as well, because at the end of the day, like we said, you work hard and we want to make sure that you are as secure as possible and are put in the driving seat to have this timely professional expert advice and education as well. So I'm just going to check, Matt, have you got anything else that you'd like to add from your end um, before I hand over to Ruth in a second? No, please, Ruth, the floor is all yours. We're looking forward to hearing how you can help us as individuals. Absolutely. So um, we are very pleased to be joined by Ruth, who's an experienced financial advisor with a difference. She is a genuine, friendly, all round animal lover. And I know we've had fantastic feedback from a number of the community already that have had anything to do with Ruth. And, um, you know, she's kind, she's caring and she really does want to see us get the policies that we need and wants to see us get the support and the advice, which I know she's going to go into her own story, which you'll see her incredible passion for this as well. Um, and Ruth, I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you so much again for being here with us this evening. Absolute pleasure. And thank you so much, guys, for having me. So good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for listening to me tonight. Um, what I want from today is to give you a good bit of base information on core areas of looking after yourself financially and where to start. But also to let you know, and I mean this when I say it, is you have options and you have people who want to fight your corner, me 100% included. So I've done a fair bit of reading on spoonies and how you have a limited number of kind of daily spoons, as we were talking about earlier in the day. And there are so many people who do need help. So you're not alone. And if I can help you get some form of a plan together, then I certainly will. So the stat is, is that 70% of UK residents wake up every morning worrying about money and their finances. And in my experience of being in the industry, it's genuinely because people worry about things that aren't necessarily true. And they're scared to start because it can feel overwhelming. But we'll take it step by step. You can't eat an elephant whole and I'm not one of these financial advisors that will overwhelm you with mumbo jumbo um, to sound all important. It really isn't my style. Um, I want to finally ed educate the world um, to help. And my reason why is cue my mum. Next slide, please, Katie. So um, why do I do what I do? Finances are really personal. And I think it's only fair that I share my story. This is my mum. Uh, we used to do lots of trips together on the left. She lives in Cape Town in South Africa. 
Um, I went to visit her once and her health had massively gone downhill. I frog marched her to the doctors and I was told unless she had an operation, uh, she only had three weeks to live. That was really, really tough to take. Um, I was told to look into her finances as they didn't think she was going to make it. And um, us downs are quite, you know, well built. So, um, yeah, they said, get everything in order and make sure that, you know, and I didn't know. And I reached out to people and financial advisors and they wouldn't help me because they said I had nothing to invest. And also I wouldn't understand it in the time frame that really grinded my gears. Um, I'm someone, it's not, it's not how complicated something is, it's just the way that it's explained. And you just need to take time to go through it. So came home, completely retrained to help people um, to understand finances and feel like they do have options. So when I say I'm here for you, I really am. So next slide, please, Katie. Um, who do I work, uh, work with? I, I choose to partner with a company called St. James's Place. They're a FTSE 100 company. Um, they've got over 158 billion funds under management. What does that mean to you? It means that people trust us to look after their financial futures. Um, and yet yeah, we've got a charitable foundation as well, um, where we do lots for charity and St. James's Place match any contribution pound for pound. I'm actually doing a skydive next month. Um, to help raise money for the charity, a bit nervous about it. So uh, anyway, next slide, please. So what does this slide say? Um, gosh, I'll be showing my age. Uh, probably a lot of you don't remember this, but I love it when a plan comes together and it's from an old TV series called The A-Team. So why have I got this random picture up on a financial kind of well-being presentation? His A-team catchphrase summarizes really, really well what happens when you start off with a plan. It has the potential to come together. So step one, what is it that you were trying to achieve for you and or you and your family? That's it. I mean, write that down on a piece of paper, just what your goals are specifically. And when it comes to financial advice, I don't ever tell my clients what to do. Um, I give you the options and then I work with you to find the best solution. And that's what we do. We work towards your goal. It's as simple as, as that. Um, and this is what advice and creating a plan does. Next slide, uh, please. So what does a financial plan look like? Uh, these are the components of a like kind of a rounded financial plan, but each could be a session in its own right. And this is honestly only, it's kind of like a top level um, going over it. So please put in the chat if, if you want that you to run a separate session on anything. We are going to cover, um, cover lots of it anyway in these sessions. But don't forget, I am here for you as well. Uh, and I'm happy to talk with you uh, in a safe place, completely confidential um, on a one to one basis, if you would prefer. Next slide, please. So today, what are we going to focus on? What we're going to focus on, session one, we're going to have a look at pensions. So saving up a pot of money for you to live off in retirement. Um, and we look at protection. So a lot of you I know are here today um, to, to talk about pr protection and what could be available to you. So I have kind of spent a little bit of time here. Um, what if you can't get protection? There's other options as well for you. So we'll talk about that. Emergency funds. Step number one is just to make sure that you do have enough readily available should anything happen, um, the unexpected, and then budgeting. So do you know what goes where? And that's what I want to help empower you to do tonight is to just at least take control of your finances. Um, so we'll look at having a budgeting kind of plan. And then the next slide, please. Session two. Your questions answered. So this is going to be a really safe place. It's a week today, a week today, isn't it, Katie? Same time. Um, it's a safe place. Check in, as it says, and start your budget or financial reviews. I know some of with some of it, you just kind of need an accounter buddy. Um, I'll be that accounter buddy, and uh, we'll be on the call. And if there's anything you want to ask me or anything that comes up, then please feel free to do so. That's what I'm here for. Uh, pop in, pop out, whatever is going to be convenient for you. So next slide. And then very finally, we're going to have a look. Session three, the next steps. Uh, we are really are looking to everything for you. We'll be looking to borrowing, mortgages, what options are available, debts. You know, not all debt is bad debt. 
So um, I'll come on and I'll talk more about that for you. Um, and then saving and investments. Um, it's, there's just so many options available to you. I wouldn't expect to come into your job and do it. So please, you know, I will explain everything fully to you and what's there. Thank you, next slide. So let's start with retirement. Um, pensions and saving a little pot up for you to live off when you um, get older. I love this slide um, and I include it on all my presentations as it's something, um, you know, people don't often think about. The hundred year life is something that all of us need to start thinking about and preparing for. Technology is advancing, uh, you know, it's enabling us to live longer. So if you retired at 65 or even with a private pension, let's just say 58, would you have made sufficient plans to provide an income for potentially the next kind of 42 years? That's something we just need to have, you know, have a look at. But, you know, let's start with the basics. What is a pension? A pension scheme is just simply a type of savings plan, but it is a long term savings plan to help you save money for later life. And there's some fantastic kind of tax advantages as well compared with other types of savings. But if you put money into a pension, um, you are, you've got to put that away for the long term because you will not be able to access it. So how do they work? You know, you save some of your income regularly during your working life, um, and this will give you an income later on, you know, to live off when you want to work less or retire. Um, so what you know this is going to provoke a lot of thoughts for you as well just to have a think about what does retirement look like for you so don't worry if you haven't thought about this already um it might be just how you kind of just planning to get through the month let alone at 65 and that's okay i'm just encouraging thought and just highlighting areas you, you might not have ever considered so when i say what does retirement look like for you how much will you need in terms of kind of like a monthly income? Well, you know, th this will give you like a base of how much you're going to need to save up for retirement. What age do you want to retire? It might seem like a long way off, but there is such significant power in starting saving early. You know, but please check, you know, vet you as well, because then we've got pension playback from from looking at that. Next slide, please, Katie. So protection. We're going to move on to protection. Number one, as your financial advisor, the first thing I'll be looking um, at before I set any kind of savings goal or anything up is making sure you are protected. Main reason being is, um, you know, it's it's kind of if I set up a savings plan for you um, and then, you know, it, and something kind of happens, then you've got your income and say you go off sick, not only will your savings plan have to stop, but how will your bills get paid? So this is, you know, I know this is understandably a concern for a lot of you. So I'm just want to kind of take a little bit of a moment here. It is often underestimated what would happen if we didn't have our main source of income. Who is reliant on your salary or your income? There's so many different forms of protection, I know. Um, but let's just explain a couple of them uh, because I know can, it can get a little bit confusing life assurance or also known not just assurance but as life insurance um, and that's just in case you are no longer here would you want to leave something to look after um, look after your family in case of this event or to anybody put simply it's an insurance policy that pays out a set sum um, if you were to die while it's in force it aims to provide financial support to anyone you leave behind to prevent loss of your income from, from causing a crisis and, and adding to the grief. Critical illness cover. That would pay out a lump sum in case of a diagnosis of a life-threatening illness, you know, making a stressful and life-changing situation that little bit more easier to cope with. And finally, what a lot of people, you know, are, are looking for is income protection. And this can help provide an income in case you are sick and unable to work and bring home your income. It's so important to make sure that your salary is protected should you be off um, because of sickness and disability. You are able to cover up to 60% of your salary uh, with income protection. 
an own occupation definition of incapacity, is, uh, of incapacity is the most comprehensive definition you can choose as it will allow you to make a claim in the event that you become too ill or injured to carry out your specific job role um, and its associated tasks. So next, next slide, please. What a lot of you are wondering, can you still get protection with chronic um, illness? Thank you for each and every one of you who's come on today um, and filled in the questionnaire before this event. Um, we've had a fair few responses and I've looked at all of those responses in detail. Endometriosis, chronic fatigue, uh, migraine EDS, Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, anxiety, depression, hypothyroid, tumors, dyslexia. It's, those are just to name a few. Uh, I name them to let you know and let everyone else know on the call um, who might have kind of similar or the same, know that you're not on your own. You'll be pleased to know I have helped people with a fair few of these conditions set up protection policies. Now to do a protection right and to make sure you are covered should anything happen, I want you to just know that it isn't a five minute process. So let's kind of manage the expectations. Sure, you can go online and set something up quickly. But if anything happened and you came to claim, are you 100% sure you would be covered and they would pay out? Will they delve into your medical history to find something you didn't disclose, which means they, they, they wouldn't pay? And do you have the finances or you know, enough kind of spoons in your day to fight it if they didn't? So step one is we go through what's called a confidential fact find. I'm gonna highlight confidential fact find. We will look into your specific illness, how long you've had it, you know, have you been professionally diagnosed, what medication do you take and how often. Uh, you cannot go into too much detail and we will do all the research for you with the providers. Uh, I work with an incredible team and they deal with this day in and day out so they know the best kind of providers that go to for specific um, illnesses. Um, so the main benefit to you is you don't have to spend all that time on the phone to the providers um, going through it all. But that's why we do the fact find. Um, we spend a little bit of time going through that just to make sure that we have all the information we need when we get on the phone. So some of these things on the screen is what you see is what we go through. What is your exact condition? How many years have you experienced it for? Exclusions and terms. If you've suffered with certain conditions for less than say three years, for example, um, some companies it's five years, then you could still get protection, but it will just exclude if you need to kind of go off work because of that current condition. But it will include if you need to go off work for anything else. Time off work. Have you spent time off work previously with the condition and have, have you been refused cover before? Certain providers cover more conditions or might need a note from your doctor, GP. Um, and did you know there are different levels of cover? I talked about own occupation earlier. I mean, this is that your plan will pay out should you suffer sickness or injury that prevents you working in your own occupation. This is the Royals Royce of cover, but if affordability is an issue, then you can look at other areas. The suited occupation, and this provides a lesser degree of cover where the insurer may require you to say return to work in an occupation for which you are suited based on skills, training, qualifications and experience. And then finally, any occupation. Um, and this is the cheapest. And under that definition, the income protection policy would pay out based on the ability of the policyholder to complete certain tasks. And it could be just simply having the ability to make the tea in the office if you're able to do so and go in. Uh, next, next slide, please. So I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but here are some of the questions I will send to anyone who is interested in going forward um, to research cover. We need to have this information to make sure you're getting cover that will pay out should you go, go off sick for any reason. It's a process, but let us do that hard work for you. Now, highlight again, confidentiality is key. We take data protection very, very seriously. My job relies on it. Uh, my office is like NASA. Um, I kid you not, I laugh about it with all my, um, you know, with anyone that I talk to, because I've got, I've got dual screens, I've got password codes, face recognition, 
um, everything, uh, key fobs, you name it, I've got it. So I will send out with that a GDPR form as well with the, quest with the questionnaire. Um, we also need some kind of basic information such as name, date of birth, address, but for obvious reasons, because we need to be able to send policy information out to you. And a lot of what your policy could be will be based on kind of age as well. Um, and I need to yeah, let you know as the, what might be with some that you'd need to provide identification, but this is common with any protection policy. Um, so yeah, next slide, please. What if I can't get cover? Well, if plan A doesn't work, guess what? There's 25 other letters of the alphabet to go off. And I'm not someone that you just say no to. I fight your corner. Um, and I've got a good example of that in a minute. So in the main, you know, total kind of declines um, that, I've, that I've initially had in the past um, would, be to, would be kind of two incidents of cancer, um, heart conditions, um, stroke, or any, any of these kind of in tandem with diabetes, but you don't know until we look into them and your specific circumstances. Um, there are lots of different offerings out there for support and too many for me to mention here today. Um, it isn't a one rule for all. Everyone is treated individually as no one, con no one condition is ever the same. And there are some really helpful websites as well uh, for you to have a look at what else and maybe kind of benefits are on offer. Something I'm not sure if a lot of you may think about, does your workplace offer income protection or private medical insurance? And, and it can be as like a benefit in kind, you know, i.e. can you pay for it through your salary each month where it will come off? These can be great as they don't do any what's called underwriting on employees, uh, specifically as they base it on kind of um, national statistics of how often on average certain people in certain age brackets are ill. So this can be great for anyone with conditions that might need to kind of get, you know, get on a policy. Um, so always just double check with your work if, if you're employed, obviously, if, if, this, um, if this is something that they offer. There's also accident, sickness and unemployment cover, ASU, it's also known as, which in a short term, it's short term insurance. Um, so it won't pay out up until retirement at age, such as what income protection would do. But it is more affordable. It's a form of income protection that pays you a tax free proportion of your lost salary every month for 12 to 24 months to help you get back on your feet. So um, it does what it says on the tin. It covers you for accident, sickness, and of course, unemployment. But what it won't cover you for, um, just full caveat, is for pre-existing conditions. But it is just something else that I wanted to let you know. So next slide, please, Katie. See, this is what I say about we fight your corner. Um, this was an email that I received from the team that I work with. Um, See, I kind of oversee everything that goes on um, in the background. So you've not just got me, you've got others as well. And you'll read it here. I've just completed income protection application for X, um, but they declined her. Um, she had a, she had a, a chronic illness cover. Uh, I'm just in the process of challenging this with the account manager if, um, as the indication of terms was miles away and we would like them to at least consider writing to her GP before the decline. Um, we're also in the process of doing some more research to make sure we can place her with another provider if possible. She did disclose a few extra disclosures that would impact on the decision, but we would expect a loading rather than an outright decline. So what that means is that obviously Try and be just fully open with what's happened, because otherwise it just makes it a lot harder when we try and get that cover in place. If you, um, you know, obviously highlight it a bit later on. Now, what loading means is it actually means you just pay a little bit more money per month um, to, to have that policy in place. So that's what loading means. So I love this last bit. Once I've heard back, I'll update you. However, I'm not giving up until I've explored every avenue possible to get protected. And I just think that is fantastic. Um, and it just shows I, I was so happy the the kind of um, you work with people that have very similar outlook to me. They don't take no for an answer.
Um, so you've got people who want to fight your corner and they didn't know I was going to put this on. So I just want just wanted to share it as a good example. So next slide, please, Katie. Oh, isn't she doing so well? Um, so your emergency fund. Um, this is uh, something to think about. Before I put any policy in place, something that I'll ask you is, do you have a comfort fund or a rainy day fund? Also emergency fund. We all need a rainy day fund and we'll all need money in the bank in case anything happens. You know, this is some of the unexpected devastation from those storms that we had. Um, yeah, no one was expecting that. You need a certain amount locked away in case anything happens that you can easily dip into. Now, to make your income protection payments per month slightly cheaper, you could actually defer, defer the start of it uh, by a few months if you had enough money to cut in your emergency fund to rely on potentially for that. It isn't a specific rule as everyone is different, but I usually like to see at least three times what your monthly household bills are um, as an emergency fund. Um, so like I've said, just un unforeseen circumstances, you've got to be so careful. Next slide, please. Uh, because take me, New Year's Day, I was that person and I used this. I, I was shaking my head, I couldn't believe it. My boiler broke down, it was freezing. I don't know if anyone remembers 2021, it was snowing, it was horrible. Um, and you know what, I had insurance, but they were saying, oh yeah, it's gonna take five days to get the part. No, 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 no. Um, I, I, yeah, about a day and a half I could last without a, a hot shower. And then I was like, okay, I'm going into my emergency fund, getting a new boiler um, and just making sure that it was covered. So that's just an example of just something that you dip into your emergency fund um, for. So next slide, please, Kate, Katie. This might seem like quite kind of complex stuff and it is a lot to take in, but you can watch the recording back. That's the beauty of having it recorded. Thank you, Vet you. Um, or you can just call me up um, and ask. But I, I, what I really need you to know is that there are people like me uh, that want to, I'll say again, want to fight your corner. So this today is just about gaining a bit of clarity. So ne next uh, slide, please. Um, so the financial questionnaire. Thank you. Um, budgeting. Um, should be. Is there another little bit of that, Katie? It's just come up with part of it. Click again. Yeah, I should go all the way through. OK, so do you know what your disposable income is at the end of every month? Disposable income. I'm not going to have five pounds in that pot yet. Um, disposable income is what you're left with when you've paid all your bills and expenses every month. If you're employed, you get paid a certain amount into your bank and then you have monthly, you know, or sometimes, you know, um, annually essential bills like gas and electricity, council tax, building insurance, et cetera, that needs to get paid. Um, and also what we what we call discretionary bills. Um, so if you're anything like me, that's a. Uh, Netflix, guilty admission, um, Amazon um, Prime or, like, or gym membership, something like that. Um, it will also, this will also help you to become more mindful of where your money goes. And it actually helped some of my clients actually cancel uh, unnecessary bills that they didn't even realize they were still paying. So trust me, don't let it overwhelm you. I promise you it isn't. Um, it's it, it'll help you to work out how much spare as well you could put towards saving or protection, putting a policy in place. And it's also important to keep this updated, especially with the steep rise in household bills set for, you know, as we all know, spring by a rise of 54 um, percent. And, you know, and I recently updated mine at the weekend because I was like, OK, can I afford to have, you know, this increase in electricity if or when it comes? Okay, so. It's handy to do. So next, next slide, please. <laughs> I'm sorry, absolutely, I love this slide. Um, yes, I do laugh at my own jokes, I'm sorry. Um, so, do, you know, do what works for you. Um, do notes on your phone. Um, this really tickles me that. Um, it can be pen and paper, whatever. Just make a start, whatever that is. I promise you, you will not regret it. 
Uh, next, next slide, please. Uh, please don't feel overwhelmed. Now, this is a snapshot of some of the questionnaire that um, you know that you have. Um, I'm, you can see on here it's little things. You've got TV license. You know, you've got your Sky kind of digital. Um, have a bit of a laugh and a joke, but trust me, swimming pool uh, and tennis course court maintenance. Uh, anyone who's that, Matt, is that you? Have you got one of those? Uh, filling in that on the form um, or any other kind of, I'm only joking, any other kind of expenses, pet food, it is all on there. Um, so it's just handy to have to realise what goes, um, what goes where. Next slide, please. So budgeting. Once again, this is something that I use in my clients to work out how much spare they have potentially to invest. I never want to look at investing anything you may need in the near future. Um, and this is how, and when I say investing or even putting towards a protection policy. Um, so this is how it works. You've got income that comes into your everyday kind of bank account. And then you've got your outgoings. This is all the bills I just talked about, your essential bills, your gas, electricity, council tax, and then your discretionary bills uh, like Netflix, things like that. So what that will then leave you with is what is left at every month. Um, you then have another pot called the, I call simply the near future pot. So do you know if you're gonna kind of be buying a new car in the next like three to five years? How much are you gonna spend on holidays? Are there any major house renovations that you've got coming up? Um, this is just things that um, I wouldn't want to kind of invest anything that you would potentially need that money for. And then finally, you've got your long term pot because anything that you do not need immediately to cover your bills or potentially for anything in the near future, I want to I would want to advise you to look at putting into something that will keep pace with inflation, because in the past 12 months to February, prices rose of inflation by 6.2 percent on average. And that was from the BBC. So what that means is that a basket of goods that you bought last year compared to a basket of goods that you might buy, you know, now in the supermarket, like eggs, um, bread and whatever, has rose by 6.2 percent. I can't believe it. I was, went shopping a little the other day and I actually said to my fella, I was like, is it just me or has this kind of gone up quite a lot? And it was like significant. I don't know if anyone, any of you on the call have felt the same. Anyway, I'm wittering. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you, Katie. Um, so where are you on the financial path? Are you ready to for a full review? Um, you know, I promise you I'm really friendly. Um, I'm, you know, pretty straight talking. I'm really down to earth and I will make sure that everybody on the call that speaks to me feels comfortable. Um, so if you are ready to um, take action, then let's chat some more. Um, you might be in the, you know, ready to kind of, you know, discuss a little bit further and just have a kind of exploratory call, like a quick kind of 15, 30 minute call to go through your options and just have a quick chat to, to find out kind of top level where you are. Happy to do that. Um, and then you might be in that. I'm still investigating. Um, you know, I'm going to keep going and just do it in your own time. That's fine as well. At least you've got a good little bit of information today. And then the final one, I need clarity. Um, so just start, please, by filling out that financial questionnaire. Um, and I'm giving my time to come on next week. So please, somebody come on and just ask me a question um, and I'll happily help and be there. So next slide, please. So we're here to support you and hopefully that's come across. So. Um, Katie, do you want to explain about the, the next session? I'm sure they're all sick of hearing my voice right now. Um, but yeah. Uh, I'm sure they're not sick of hearing your voice. Thank you so much <laughs> for that, Ruth, and for the very clear support that you've got for all of the community as well. And hopefully that was helpful for people just to see that we do have options. There are people that will fight our corner. And as well, that all of it does quite often start with us just doing that budgeting piece, which I know from a personal perspective, I feel I really stuck my head in the sand about for a while and kind of roughly knew is like, yeah, I think that what comes in and what goes out probably about the same, but actually just 
giving myself that time and filling that questionnaire out was a real game changer. And to be honest, doing that and then seeing the changes from there were one of the reasons why I got on board with, with VetU and just taking back control of that. So if anyone does want to use the spreadsheet, if you are a spreadsheet person and like that cat in the meme, um, we've popped the link in the chat box. We'll pop that on the final slide again in our digital delegate bag. You can download that um, and you can fill that out yourself. So that is actually one of the things that we can do on the next session as well, because we actually met with Claire Hodgson, who is one of the, the founders of BVCIS, and just discussed like, okay, what are the barriers? What are the concerns? What are the problems within the community that we can help with? And she talked a lot around quite often, and understandably so, because I hear you, I've been there, getting this budget down on paper can feel a bit overwhelming and it can feel like you're alone with it. It can feel like it takes a lot of spoons. So next week we are going to open a call. Ruth is very kindly going to join us. You can come along, you can ask questions. We can download this worksheet together. I'm going to do the spreadsheet at the same time um, and we could just go through it and everybody's got space. You've got an hour held to do it then. If you want to pop into the chat and just ask specific questions, you can do that anonymously. You can do that publicly, whichever way that you feel comfortable. And let's just start with taking that first step because then you know what's affordable. We know what maybe we want to tweak things on. Maybe we realize, oh, actually, it's it's not quite as bad as I thought that it was. Or maybe it's, it's in a different direction, but it just helps with that next step with clarity. So like we say, we're going to provide some space for that next week and we really hope that's going to be helpful on the 19th then which is the session afterwards we're going to go more into the other parts of that financial plan that Ruth just outlined there about like investments about um debt for example just signposting around that like what we can do next so let's really take the ball by the horns and see where we can move this forward as well so I'm going to move on to a couple of calls to action from a vet you point of view. Um, if anyone does have questions for Ruth, because we're going to have a little bit of time on this session, but like we say, the next one really is the space where come along, ask you questions, take advantage of, of Ruth being here and actually holding that space for you. Um, so please, if you've got anything, pop it in the chat box. And just before we do ask those questions, and Ruth has just popped it in there anyway, I'd love to know what your key take home has been. If you're happy to share that, it'd be fantastic just to see in the chat, like what has been your, your light bulb moment, the thing that's made you go ping, the, the aha moment on there as well. If you do want to book in with Ruth, she's very kindly opened up a diary to talk through individual circumstances. Um, if you do want her in your corner with some of these policies and like we say, this is really just us educating us to next steps. Like we have a fantastic relationship with Ruth, but we just want you to realize that financial advice is, is out there and let's make it more accessible and set you up for success with this. Because while we keep saying everyone works so hard for the cash, we know it's not not easy um, quite frequently. And I, I say this from a point of view of, uh, of having experienced various things throughout my, my time as well. I, I know it can have a, a massive effect on our energy levels. I just want to say, Katie, on that as well, is that there's a big misconception that you have to have millions to have to go and see a financial advisor. You don't. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. the, the, the conversations that we have, are comp you know, are free. So don't think you're going to be charged uh, if you have an introduction call with me or if we go through to the next one. There is only a charge when you decide to take forward a recommendation that I've made. And that is way down the line after yeah. we've gone through the ins and outs and I've clearly described it. Financial advice is for everyone. So don't let anyone tell you that it's not or you have to have a certain amount of money in the bank. I love that, Ruth, and so true and something that comes up time and time again and where we try and break down those barriers at VetU as well. You don't need a massive estate. We don't need millions of pounds in the bank. Actually, everyone deserves timely, professional, expert financial advice, and that's one of the reasons why we're here, like Matt said right at the beginning as well. Um, so, Matt, I'm going to hand over to you to see what else you'd like to add from a VetU point of view, and I'm just going to whiz up some links on the screen as well if anyone does want any further resources. Matt? Yeah, sure. Great, everybody. Well, Ruth, th thanks again for your presence. Oh, oh Matt. I think and, and thanks for everybody for joining us. We we really want to make sure that this is bespoke to, um, uh, to Ruth and, and, and explain your personal circumstances to her. 
I know personally how hard Ruth works to find solutions for everybody, irrespective of their challenge. So, um, you know, please do take the time for that personal approach because that is going to, you know, the investment you make now, both in time and Oh, is that just me, Katie? No, Matt, I think we and, keep losing you. And also, in, you know, a little bit of money, maybe in, in, in uh, evidence in the future. Thank oh. you so much, Matt. We lost you a little bit in the midst of that, but we um, definitely got the sentiment there as well. So um, again, I've just popped up on the screen um, some signposting. If you do want to look at any of our further events, Coming on next week, that will be the same link as what you used for this one. It's all you've registered for all three events with coming on to register for this one oh, as well. Sorry. Can you hear me okay, now? Matt. We can hear you now. We've got we've got you, Matt. All oh, good. Ah, oh, good. <laughs> all I was saying is I know it might take a little bit of personal time investing in yourself now, but it's definitely worth doing. And if you've got the time, Ruth, I know has certainly got the time. She's done amazing things for, for individuals who felt that they had no solution in supporting themselves financially with uh, financial support products. So uh, please do take the time. It's worth it. Make that investment now. Uh, don't put off. Yeah. And I'd just like to add to that, Matt, if you don't mind that when you have a chronic illness or when you've had health issues I think it can be really easy number one to feel like you're not in control and you don't have any ability to earn as much money as your peers because you have to change your working uh, hours or, or, or the job that you do or you know no control of your symptoms or no, no control but I just like everybody to know that you know you, you, you there's always things that you can do to feel more in control of your your financial life even if it's not where you'd like it to be you can you can take steps to go in that direction and, and having that goal and that, and that sort of awareness is, is really really helpful um, and I think number two specifically for um, people with chronic illnesses and, and health issues it, it can feel almost like well you know I've had I've had the health issue happen to me um, already so I don't need income protection or I don't need life insurance it's already happened to me and it you know won't happen again so unfortunately it's not like lightning it, these things tend to strike you more than once and, and I'd love to say that yes I've ticked that box and that's my that's the life experience in the bag now and it won't happen again but actually I think having that awareness of how illness and, and ill health can affect you and affect your life it, it makes it all the more important to have these things in place for even if you have to be excluded for stuff that's happened to you in the past you've still got all of those conditions that potentially could affect you in the future that you can still plan for so just because you you know even if you do have to have an exclusion on, on a policy it doesn't mean that it's not worth taking it just means that you know you, you might not have that this specific area of cover but how many clients do we like you know shake our heads or, 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 or grit our teeth because they said oh well you know he's already broken his leg so I didn't think it was worth getting pet insurance and they come in with a completely different condition and you think ah oh, if only you just paid that money and we wouldn't have this problem so it's just the same for us, I think. And I just wanted to, to cover those two points quickly. Yeah, I love that, Liv. And such a powerful point when you were speaking, I was thinking just of the pet insurance example, just before you said it as well of, yeah, it's it's worth just like Matt said as well, talking through your individual circumstance. And yeah, I hear you on, on what you're saying there as well, Liv, of thinking, oh, well, this, this happened, so nothing else will happen. But actually just sitting and giving ourselves the space and trying to break it down as much as we can do and that's really one of the reasons why we've put these sessions on is that we get it that just like you've said there Liv it, it can feel like we're very out of control and actually we just want to provide like the next step and to be able to go as far as you can see and showing you that there are people here to cheerlead you and to help you to guide you to advise you and to advocate you as well because you know each and every one of you are, are valuable and that's regardless of like how many hours that we can or can't work and what our experiences are. So that's one of the reasons why we've been so pleased to work with BVCIS on this, because speaking certainly with Claire, it, what the message we were getting was that it can feel very much like a lot of people feel abandoned and like there's, there's no help and no assistance and no support. And actually we want to remind you that there is, and there are people that really do want to fight your corner. And there are things that, like we say, even if it's not the ideal, even if it's not the exact thing that we'd want it to always be on paper, but there are things that we can do. So we wanted to say a huge, huge thank you 
first of all to BBCIS for collaborating with us on this. I think it's something that I know a number of us at VETU have been really passionate about doing and we realise this is something that people are going to revisit. And secondly, a massive thank you to Ruth for gifting again her time, her expertise, her uh, a kind encouragement and just being there for a group of people that I know quite often maybe um, do feel like there's there's not anyone fighting their corner. So thank you, Ruth. And finally, a thank you to everyone that's been on, on the call as well this evening for being here live, for gifting yourselves the time to actually sit down and listen to this and um, hopefully take the next step from there as well. So we'd love to, again, like we say, hear what you've taken home from this. If there's anything that you'd like to share, I see we've got a couple of claim, um, a couple of things that uh, we've got come in the chat box. There might be some tailored help out there. Um, someone that didn't know that BVCIS existed. So hooray for us raising some awareness for you guys as well. And if there is anything else that you want to share between now and next week, please do. Um, if anyone's got any final questions, please do pop them in the chat. You can direct them um, straight to me, Matt, Ruth or Liv if you do want to ask them anonymously. But yeah, just a, a huge, huge thank you. And um, I don't know if there's anything else that anybody wants to add to that. Yeah, thank you so much, Katie, for all your work setting up these sessions and um, making sure that they all came together. It's been amazing to work with you, you guys at you and, and, and yourself in particular. So thank you so much as well to you. Oh, you're most welcome. It's our pleasure. Like we say, we just want to support. We want to help. We want to signpost. We want to educate and empower everyone to realise that the there are options, there are steps and there is support. So thank you all so much for being on here. It's been our pleasure. And we look forward to seeing you again next week at the same time to we'll have be that there. hour. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here, drop in. Yeah. Get a cup of coffee, fill out a spreadsheet. That's it. Or a notebook. If you don't like oh. spreadsheets, if you like the cat, that is fine. We can do pen and paper. We can do apps, whatever way oh, yeah. suits you. <laughs> That's simple it. as simple as whatever works for you. Yeah, definitely. I know certainly I know many people that if we see a spreadsheet, like, no, thank you, but <laughs> we can absolutely make it work for you. It's just about us gaining that clarity of what is actually going on because whichever financial advisor that you chat with, it will always set you up for success if you've got that bit of clarity. I know Ruth will attest to this as well, won't you? 100% honestly just reach out and um, you know financial advice is really personal you know you find the advisor that's right for you you have choices and vet you collaborate with some incredible ones you know um, you know just just ask and you, you'll be put through to wh whoever it is you would like uh, and then you just go on you know the calls and find out uh, other advisors we're all here to help you. Definitely and Thank you so much, Ruth, for that. And again, if there's anything that we can help you with in the interim, if you've got questions, if you've got feedback, if you've got anything that wasn't clear or any other topics that you'd like to see us cover, just drop us an email, hello at vetu.co.uk, and we'd love to help. Because like we say, we're just a community of, of vets that really want to make this more accessible um, because, yeah, you all, you all work hard, um, you're all valuable, and that's why we're here as well. So I'm going to stop the recording for anyone that is catching up and we will look forward to seeing you all next week hopefully there'll be some of you that have caught up that haven't made this evening's live session but will still be joining us for that accountability open q a having the floor open to be able to actually just go through that budget and making the space for it we've carved space in we'd love to see who turns up and take some action on that session too so thank you all Be so your much. accounter buddies come join your accounter buddies <laughs> accounter buddies yes <laughs> <laughs> that's it yeah we'd love to share the space with you and I'll certainly be doing mine at that time anyway I'm going to be on the call going back through mine because I always revisit that every few months especially like Ruth said with the changes that we're seeing at the moment in bills in energy in inflation so yeah come join us we'd love to see you there